So, today we have a special stream. Pick a bird. <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to be using Microsoft Azure to see if we can find out about any new job listings posted on the GitHub job listings. So hopefully it can help some folks in our community get jobs. It'll be interesting to see how it works. And we're going to be using Microsoft's Azure functions to do that. And so thank you all for being here. And so we're going to get started. But first off, we're going to start with our classic mug Friday. Today we're going to be making a pumpkin pie in a mug. Mm. I guess we'll get started. So today we're going to be working on a special Azure project. What we're going to do is use Azure functions, which are serverless functions, which basically means you just have a code snippet post onto an Azure cloud and not have to worry about updating the servers, maintaining it, figuring out the configurations to make the endpoints and everything work. Put in a code snippet and then it'll run it. It'll run it and triggered by different events, HTTP requests by timers, which is what we're gonna do today or by all sorts of other events. And then have it check the GitHub jobs API for different jobs that have just been added to the listings. If there's any new ones detected, we're gonna have it go to a discord in the job help section People will be able to look at new jobs that just came in. And if anyone's interested in those jobs, then they can apply. So we're gonna make it super easy for people to be able to do that. And that's what we're doing today. Here's what I wanted to show you guys, because we're focusing with Azure Functions today. You get a free grant every month. You can have a million executions, which I don't think we're gonna get a million executions in a month. A million executions is a game of thrones. <laughs> If you're using Azure Functions for something simple, you can use it for free until you need to scale it up and make it big. Okay, we're gonna follow this. We need prerequisite, create a function app. I'm gonna create a resource. Let's go to compute. And then let's go to function app. Ba bam And then let's see, pay as you go, oh, that's fine. And resource group, we'll just do in stuff as a resource group and function app name this is going to be called job first to know because we're going to create an azure function that'll let us know about any new job postings and so we don't have to keep refreshing or going to this page and checking at any time instead it's going to let us know because it's going to do the job for us and so we're going to be the first to know hopefully about all this stuff and select the runtime stack like node.js and we'll put it into sure central us that's fine and then hosting new storage account sure consumption plan i think this is what we need Wabba bam next monitoring application insights i don't think we need it so i'm not gonna worry about it and i don't think we need tags review and create da -da 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 -ba 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 -ba. oh no i broke it let's go to previous review and create hmm Oh, create. There we go. And then we just click create. Initializing deployment. Now it's going to do its thing. I need to catch up on chat. Deployment in progress. Deployment is underway. This is so cool. Literally, you just like create like a little function app thing. Put your like code snippet in there and it just takes care of everything. All right, let's do this. We got to go to the resource. Here it is. This is our Azure function. So we go to functions and we're going to add one. How do we want to author this? We want to write our code in the portal, I think. So we'll just click in portal and we want a timer one. We can also trigger our Azure functions using a webhook. If someone wants to call the Azure function and then have that trigger a whole bunch of stuff, then you can make that happen. But we're going to have it on a timer. You can also have a more templates and stuff too. But here we go. And then create. Ooh. So look at this. You can put your function in here and then you just have this console. And so I'm going to expand this out so you can see it. Oh, cram. Where'd it go? I need to go back to the resource. Okay. So you can have logs or the console. And so we're going to have this. And then this is the piece of code that runs. And then you just say run. It'll run it. And there it is. It says JavaScript timer function ran. And so let's see. JavaScript timer function ran. Super easy. When I was preparing for this stream and I was like, well, what does it take to create an Azure function? And then I was just like, wait a minute. I did this in like 10 minutes. We just got a function up and running on the cloud without having to worry about server setups or anything. And we're just like, okay, here's a piece of code. Click, click, click and run. That's pretty insane. So let's see, we go to manage and let's see, integrate. I think this is it. Yeah, the schedule. Okay, if we want it to run every hour, this is using like the cron kind of thing, right? Yeah, second and minute. So every hour on the dot, 
would be like zero, zero, star, star, I think. So like at zero seconds, at zero minutes, if we put in like 30, it'll be like every hour on the 30th minute would be when this runs, right? And then if we do like one, then it would be like 1 a.m. it would run. So this will work. Okay, save. All right, saved it. Okay timer trigger we're gonna go to this function we can add more functions to this by the way but we just need to actually pull in the github api and then look at it and log it and then we're gonna have it go into our discord as a webhook so I already kind of followed this already. So now you guys already know what to do. In case you guys are interested in how to create a Microsoft Azure function, like I just did, there's a link if you guys would like to try it out. It is docs.microsoft.com. You can also just like search online for Azure functions, creating a scheduled function. Here's GitHub Jobs API. I need to zoom in so you can actually read it. Let me show you how this works. So description, Python, okay. What we really need is just this example. Bam! This is an open API by GitHub that just lists out all the different job openings that are available for you guys and created on Friday, November 22nd. That's today at 11, 20 and 33 seconds at UTC. And the company is called Capgemini. That's pretty cool. And here's all the job opening descriptions and then the URL. And it also includes how to apply. So you can apply by using this link. Sometimes I think they have other things like email. Here's a company logo. What's the company logo look like? Capgemini. Well, that's a cool logo. I don't know what they do, but I guess we can find out. And there's other ones like Friday, November 22nd at five o'clock UTC. A company called Kipsu posted an opening for a full stack software engineer in location in Minneapolis. Capgemini is in location United States. They want an AI data engineer with Python, SQL, cloud, and ML technologies experience. This is awesome, right? This is basically in our Azure function code. We're just gonna have to take this in. Okay, so I wonder how we can add modules can we add node modules to it or should we just do like an http request i'm gonna see is this what we're looking for i don't know if we need to add a package.json file oh you can deploy your code ensure the node modules folder is included or you can use kudu click debug console function app name let's try that so what we need to do is we need to go to https and job first to know that scm.azurewebsites.net if this works, this is gonna be magic. Who do services? All right. Ba Bam. So we go here, and then we have to go into mm, debug console command. Ah. And then our the package JSON file is uploaded. Do we need to upload a package JSON? Do we have to? Go to www dragon package JSON file in there. So we need to go to home site. WW root. There's a host that JSON. I want to see. So we need to put a package.json function in there. Or can we just do npm install? No such file as package.json. So if we do like npm in it, then it'll ask us a whole bunch of stuff, right? To be able to do a package.json. Ah! So then we can do this and we'll call it uh, job first to no. Package version, description, job, first to no. And your point in Next.js? Sure, I don't know, doesn't matter. Key repository, nothing. Keywords, uh, we'll put it in slow. We're not even gonna publish this anywhere anyway. Uh, the license, and va-bam, yes. Now we have package JSON. Wa -ba -ba bam Who needs to figure it out and upload everything when you can just create it yourself? Now we can do npm install node fetch. Node fetch is what we want. It added it. Found zero vulnerabilities. We got secure code in here. I think we're good to go. So that should mean that if we go into our resource and then we go to this function and then we're like, we're gonna put this in here and then we put in very top let fetch equal require no dash fetch then I want to see if this works then we should theoretically be able to say fetch what is this job thing ah here we go bam let's see if we can fetch this and then await oh because this is an async function yeah this is how you do an await. You do a fetch because this returns a promise, which is basically any function where you can do a then after means it's a promise. And so we can do an await 
And so we can be like, let the result equal that. And then we'll say result dot JSON equals jobs. And then we'll print out the jobs and save this. Oh, we could have done just save and run. And then we're gonna see if it runs. Oh, it ran via the host APIs. But where's the output? Request body. Oh no. How do we know if it worked? I think what I needed to do. Oh, you need to do context.log. That's why. Ah, save and run. Let's see. Will it work? Oh, it might print out a bunch of stuff. Is Oh, cram. Oh, cram. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do another awake because this also returns the promise. Okay, let's try this again. Now it's running. They see me running on a stick. Wait, wait, it doesn't make sense. Okay. We did it. It's printing it out. We got it. Dang, that was fast. We got the entire jobs, APIs, and everything working in here. So it looks like this, and we can go through all of these, all of these different jobs. How many jobs are there? There's 11 items. And each of them has an ID, has a type, and a URL for the job position. Let's see what this looks like. Full-time job at Simpo Inc. San Dimas, California, with the software engineer job right here. This is what the position looks like. You can read about it here, or you can read about it in this description, which needs to have HTML support. So we might have to clean that up before we post it into our Discord. We're gonna see if we can put all of that information into our Discord using a webhook. What we're gonna do, at least to, for now, to test it out is to just take the first job and then format it and see how it shows up in our Discord. And then once we get that up and running correctly, then we'll put it on the actual regular timer and have it only check the ones where the created at is later than the last time that the function would have run. Makes sense, right? This is the plan, let's see. Let's see, this works. So you're supposed to do context log instead of console.log. That totally makes sense. And it's pretty easy. We got the jobs. We just need the first one. Let's say jobs zero. I assume that there's gonna be at least one job over there. Then we need to create a webhook. Would you like to see how to create a webhook in Discord? Okay, so you go here and then you go to server settings. You go to webhooks. I don't know if you guys can see webhooks. Streamer mode enabled. I'm gonna disable it for a second. So here it is, here's what it looks like. We have some webhooks in here. I'm gonna create a webhook. We're going to put this into a channel, Discord bot jam. And so we'll put it in there for now. We're gonna call this Sean Joppery. Okay, and then I need to hide the webhook URL so that you guys can't see that one at least. So sorry about that, but okay. So then you just click save. Easy peasy, right? Okay, so now what we need to do with and this is wait fetch and then I wonder if I can do not environment variables but I can do like variables it probably doesn't really matter so I'm gonna put this variable in here or the entire URL I'm sorry but I can't show all of it on stream at the moment because this is a webhook URL that if I show it on stream then anybody could see it and use it and that's dangerous okay perfect so now I can show you the code without worrying about it okay so what I did was, I created this thing called Discord Webhook URL and you can see all the stuff, but it's a really long URL so you won't see the rest of it. So now we can move forward. So we need this Discord Webhook URL. We need to do this as a fetch or as a post. And so, holy smokes, Talasa, thank you so much. Holy cream, we need to add this as a method. What? Give us a what? I'm gonna get this up and running and working and then we can go and look at some of the other stuff in Discord. But first we need to figure out how we can post into our Discord using a webhook. I came prepared. I have a documentation on the webhook resources and how you're supposed to post into Discord. Webhooks are a low effort way to post messages that in channels in Discord. They do not require a bot user or authentication to use. And so you just have to use a webhook and then you just like make a web post, web HTTP post request to whatever URL to give it. And then it goes into the channel. And so you can use stuff like this, like webhooks are used for like GitHub, for instance, or for Discord. And so where is the code? This is a thing that I found online that shows you 
the structure of webhooks and how you're supposed to post. This is what you can put as the body into the webhook and then they'll be like, oh, this is what you need to do to make it look awesome. You can put like the variety and the title and links for how to apply so that we can put that in there. Let's see, what else do we need to do? I think what I'm gonna do is also, I'm gonna post this code onto a GitHub repository so that you can kind of like, or oh, I could do a GitHub gist. It's like a code snippet, literally. Gists are like this, uh, G-I-S-T dot github.com and then you can put here is how to do xyz or whatever and so then it's just like a very short little snippet and then it's like here is how to set up an azure function and here's the code that we used for how to look at the github job openings that are posted on there and then have that post into our discord so we're gonna do that all right so we have to post i think i think in a fetch in java script fetch post Mm, using fetch. It does a post sample. Hey, got post sample. Here we go. Create a gist. Oh, you can create a gist using a. I didn't know that. Hold on, let me show you this. Did you guys know that you can create gists onto your GitHub using an HTTP request? We can put random code snippets and then post it to GitHub just like this. Wow. Okay. Well, what's your look at that? All right, well anyway, I guess this is all we needed. So we need to have the options in here. So then this needs to look like, I'm gonna save this out for later in the future. And then our Discord data needs to look like this username. If it overrides the default username of the webhook, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we could do like username equals webhook and avatar URL. Here, put the username. We'll say username is new, new jobs bot. I think that will work. And then the avatar URL is gonna be the, I don't know if we need an avatar URL. So we'll just skip that one. Content, okay. Content, we'll put like, new job available. Click here to apply, something like that. And then let's see, we need an embed. And so we're gonna add an embed here. Oh, we have footers and images. We can put in the actual image. That's cool. Okay, and a thumbnail. So we need embeds in here. So the embeds are gonna look like this. You know, I should have just copy pasted the whole thing. That would have been super easy. Why didn't I even think of that? Okay, let's look at the, so it's gonna be a full-time job would be the type. And so the name is gonna be the company name. And so we'll do company. So this will be, all right. But job equal the first job that's available and then the author will be job.company and the URL will be company URL and so put in mm, job.company URL and the icon URL is gonna be there was a company logo oh here it is found it job.company logo Title is gonna be, let's see, there's a job title literally here. Okay, so this will be job.title and the job URL will be this. And the job.url and created at. We don't need created at, but we do need the type. So maybe we need to do job title and the type. And the description, I don't think it allows us to pass in HTML as description, but I guess we can try it anyway. And so yeah, it worked, it worked. You got it to work all oh, day. Oh, and the color and the fields. What, what are all these fields? The fields are even more text, text and even more text. So you can do text, even more text. Oh, so we can do text and then full time. And Oh, okay, got it. So we can do like value needs to be job.type. Wait, type inline is true. Yes, we don't need even more text. Hmm, I don't know if we need this title there. I think the title should be whatever the company's name is. I think that makes more sense. And so here we'll do job.title and inline. We don't need more text. Value lose inline true parameter if you want to do use inline true parameter if you want to do oh I see and thanks you're welcome okay come in do that and let's see 
you have the description. How does this look? Okay, title, you can put, oh, you can put a hyperlink code in there. Okay, let's see. I think this is good. I think we got it. I just press control S and I think it's saving. I hope, <laughs> I hope it's saving. I might've messed it up. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, okay, I think it's saved. All right, so here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna go into the Discord bot jam. This is where we can test out our code and then I'll run it. Let's hope this works. No new trace in the, what? Oh no, I broke it. Did I need to save it again? Why did it print everything? What is no new trace? I think we need a try catch because something is broken and I'm not sure what, and we need to print out and figure out what's broken. Hmm. Put that there. I need to indent this correctly. So the indentation needs to be here and then we'll do a catch error and then we'll do context.log of the error. So now if we do save and run, we'll see. No new trace in the past 23 minutes. I think it's running. Did it run? I think I broke it. Yeah, I'm gonna refresh and then see if that fixes anything. View my recommendations, nope. I'm gonna go back into here and and so I'm trying to figure out, uh-oh, unexpected to, oh, here we go. I figured it out. Syntax error at line 20. So I must have missed a, um, a oh, <laughs> I had an extra comma in there for some whatever reason. So let's see if this works. Whoops. <laughs> How did I get an extra comma in there? Hmm. Uh-oh, it's still broken, I think. Okay. Unexpected token. This is in line 39. 39. So line 39, there's an extra token. Oh, I, I'm missing a closed parenthesis somewhere. Where am I missing this? Okay, here's the embeds and everything else looks... Ah, rip, rip. I needed to close that, right? And so it's supposed to have like a thumbnail and footer and stuff. I don't think we care about that part. So then it's still missing something. It's still got the author thing messed up. I'm missing this. Yeah. Uh, ha. I think this is it. <gasps> Heck, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the support. Wow. I think I fixed it. I think. Yeah. Okay, I got this. Save and run. Okay. Okay, I cannot read property title of undefined. Title of undefined. 33. Hello everyone. Line 33. Oh no. I put in job.title.title. <laughs> oh rip. Rip. <laughs> Holy smokes. All right. We're getting really close to making this work. I think oh wait, I think it worked. I think it worked. No it didn't. Where is it? Where is it? This function was from how many called via APIs, and then it says the function ran. So it ran, but it didn't post the message. Did it post somewhere different? Did it post somewhere where we shouldn't have? Where did it go? What? Okay, this is concerning. It was supposed to go in this channel. Oh no, what have I done? I don't see anything. Is that what we need? Is that why? Headers. Maybe. This is all I need. Content type equals application slash JSON. Maybe. Maybe that's what we need. Let's try this for the fetch. All right. Let's try this, CJ. We'll fix it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It just wanted a header. What? <laughs> oh dang, I can't believe it worked. I can't believe that was it. What? Gotta specify your content type. You know this. Dang it. <laughs> oh dang, thank you CJ. Wow, alright.